Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, tonight's video is going to be on one of the weirdest things that I've ever seen, complete with some media framing to get your attention and get those anti-gun vibes going. Everything is going to be linked in the description box below, particularly the part where they have to say what actually happened when a individual raided a FBI field office this is going to blow your mind. Everything is in linked, linked in the description box below. I cannot wait to hear what you guys think on this one. I'm going to say a quick word from our sponsor who made this video possible, and then we're going to walk into the weird on this one. But let's get it. Now, Excess Sites is known for making the fastest sites in any light. For more than 25 years, the Excess team has created some of the most innovative sites on the market today for pistols, rifles, and shotguns. Whether used for personal defense or hunting, these sites are designed and built to be the absolute best for their specific purpose. Now, Excess Sites has also offered you a 10% coupon for being a viewer of this channel for the rest of the week. Use code XSSITES10 in the link in the description below for your discount. Thank you so much to Excess Sites, and also thanks to them for making sure you guys get hooked up with that discount. But let's get into this because the FBI field office in the Ohio area just got attacked by a guy with a nail gun. But that's not how the media frames it. Let's get it because there's a few things that we have to talk about. Here's the first article. I'm going to reference two, again, in the link in the description. Man armed with AR-15 style rifle shoots into FBI Cincinnati building with a nail gun and flees, leading to interstate standoff. Does that seem like a weird forced title to you? Because what happened was the guy walked in and shot a nail gun into an FBI office. Where did the man armed with AR-15 style rifle shoots into FBI Cincinnati building with a nail gun? Seems kind of forced to get to the point of the nail gun. But I digress, because this is part of a narrative. The second part I'm going to show you, they're going to introduce some more stuff. Something that happened, I don't know, in January of last year? Anyway, that's what we're going to talk about. There's some things going on with this. Now, an armed man flashing an AR-15 style rifle fired a nail gun into an FBI Cincinnati building Thursday morning, leading to a police pursuit and shots fired on the interstate, authorities say. So, the first thing off the gate, I'm just going to say this right now. I know there's a lot of frustration out there right now. The biggest thing that we can do is control ourselves, understand that the big move that we can make is in November. In November, everything has changed. And I'm going to do a video on that pretty soon. But we are heading towards a red tsunami of epic proportions. And nothing is going to hurt the people who you feel have offended you more than losing power through the ballot box. This is incredibly important to understand. We are going to fight with this. We are driven with this. But we are going to, more importantly, drive with this. And that's incredibly important. I know it's not everybody, but understand, if you feed into the narrative, if you give in to what they want, you're giving them ammunition against your own cause. That's just a thing. That's just a thing. But let's keep going because you can see what they're doing here. But anyway, here we go. Two law enforcement officers sources told NBC News that a man got inside and fired a nail gun toward personnel before fleeing in a car. Again, where did the AR-15 come into play here? Is it just an, or an ornament? Did they think he had one? Did he have one in the car? Are they go in with a nail gun? Because if you have an AR-15 and nothing happened, really all that happened here was an FBI office was assaulted with a nail gun. But that's not the way the media is framing it. Now here's the second piece. This is incredibly important. Armed man who was at Capitol on January 6th is fatally shot after firing into an FBI field office in Cincinnati. So now we've got an AR-15 wielding nail gunman. And then we've also got, he was at January 6th. Are you starting to see the pieces here? Starting to see what they're laying out? The suspect was armed with an AR-15 style rifle when he fired into the FBI office building with a nail gun. He fled and a standoff followed. Don't you think that could simply say assailant fires nail gun into the FBI office? Just saying. But you also got to throw in that 1-6 thing, right? The man who fired a nail gun into the FBI Cincinnati building Thursday before he was killed by officers was at the Capitol on January 6th, officials said. Ooh, he's a boogeyman. So you got to throw out two boogeymen. You got to say he had an AR-15 even though he used a nail gun. You got to say he was at January 6th because that clearly means that he's part of the Trump party. And... This is where we get into this next part where FBI Christopher Ray comes out and says and insinuates the Trump thing. Officers fatally shoot, uh, shot the suspect after failing to negotiate with him, Ohio State Police Spokesman Lieutenant Nathan Dennis told reporters. The man raised a gun and officers opened fire. Dennis said, was it the nail gun or was it the fabled AR-15 that was never fired? But then the story was about the AR-15. 
Anyway, let's keep going because this is where the FBI director comes in. And listen, and keep this in mind, everything that we observed in the summer of 2020, that around that time frame, you know, give or take a couple months in the year, leading to the most guns ever purchased, first time gun buyers, all that. Yeah. FBI Director Christopher Wray on Wednesday decried Trump supporters who have been using violent rhetoric against law enforcement in the wake of the search. There, first of all, there's no reason ever for violent rhetoric because all it does is make you a target. It does not do anything, and it make and it makes you look worse than you are. Letting emotion out is perfectly fine, but when you let out violent rhetoric, you're setting yourself up for failure, and you're giving them what they want. So just don't do it. It's, it's pretty straightforward. But the important thing here is Christopher Ray saying Trump supporters. So was this a Trump supporter? Let's keep going. Quote, I'm always concerned about threats to law enforcement, Ray said. Quote, violence against law enforcement is not the answer no matter who you're upset with. I would like to um, cite my case point from the summer and the fall of 2020. Awkward. The suspect's motive in Thursday incident is unclear. So they're definitely Trump supporters. The violent rhetoric is terrible. Um, but it's unclear the motive. Seems like a bit of a jump there, doesn't it, Chris? Mr. Christopher Ray? Just saying. And that's what I've got for you guys. This extremely weird story, but it shows you what they're trying to do. And I will see you tomorrow morning on the Bullet Points. I'm Braden. See you later.